What is your choice of self-sabotage? And I know that might seem like a funny question to ask, but I'm asking what kind of self-sabotaging are you partaking in right now? By the way, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and give us a like on this video if you like it. And also in the comments section, I'd love to hear about your situation. What kind of self-sabotage have you been working on to overcome in your life? Because this can help everybody to understand their own self-sabotage and to be healthier and happier individuals. So let's talk about self-sabotage. We know that it's based on consciousness or unconsciousness. We can consciously make a decision or unconsciously make a decision that will sabotage us and hurt us. And one of the things that I really wanna talk about in today's video are those patterns. A lot of times we're unable to really see the patterns in our life, specific areas of our life and specific choices that we're making that are consistently self-sabotaging ourselves in certain specific areas of our life. So I want us to start looking at patterns. Is something not working? Um, many times we can sit there and talk about that. This has just not been working in my life or this area of my life has been really lacking or there seems to be some sort of black hole right here that I seem to not be able to get over. You know, maybe we're constantly making choices with the self-sabotage, whether it's procrastination, whether it's perfectionism, whether we're self-medicating, but even more so, maybe it could be the types of people that we're bringing into our life because sometimes the self-sabotage in our life is not actually our direct choices but there are indirect choices example we choose somebody to be in our life that maybe not necessarily needs to be in our life and maybe we're constantly choosing that same brand of person that might not be bringing us any joy or happiness and might be taking away from our life for example many of you might have that desire to save people and so it's constant it's a constant pattern in your life where you have one or two people or, or multiple people in your life that you're constantly taking care of or saving and we have to really understand what is that core belief that's creating that reality. Not that we don't wanna help people, but we do need to really focus on people that want to be saved because remember, ultimately, if somebody wants to be saved, they're going to be working to save themselves as well. And this is a very interesting caveat here because I've seen that a lot of times when people work to save other people to a, to a large degree, that saving is based on the core belief that they need to do that to keep people around. That people are around, if they can help people, those people will be there for them, okay? And so that could be a basis of the core belief that actually creates the reality where you say, wow, why is it that all my friends like need help all the time? Why is it that I'm always giving people advice and why is this always happening? Well, let's get down to the bottom of why we're selecting certain people in our life to continue to be around us. I do want to talk about a couple of other things too that I think are very important when it comes to self-sabotage is those core beliefs based on self-esteem, self-worth, a negative or positive self-image. What does our image look like to ourselves? Our self-image, not the image to the outside world, but how we see ourselves. These are very interesting things. What about do we deserve good things? Do we deserve good situations? Do we deserve happy, healthy relationships? We need to really dig into these core beliefs to understand what's really under there because the core beliefs are what are ultimately sabotaging us. So the core belief is there, and let's say that it's a negative core belief, and we it's, it's beyond believable because we've been saying it over and over again. It's been with us since we were very young, so it's something that we believe to be true, and then we act from that. Right? So if we're acting like for the example that I was talking about, like saving everybody, and we feel like we have to be the savior, we didn't just get that from thin air. There's a reason why that came about, okay? And that was based on the core belief. And that could be because the people that were around you growing up, maybe you had to take care of your mom or your dad. Maybe that's why they were there is because they needed you. And so you felt needed and wanted, and that's why you continue to do this, right? So there's lots of levels of why we do what we do. It's not just that we're self-sabotaging ourselves. I mean, because it's, it's based on something a lot deeper. And that's one of the big things I want you to think about is that, a lot of times self-sabotage is not based on, oh yeah, I'm gonna go out and sabotage myself. It's based on those core beliefs, okay? And so think about it, even like self-medicating. You know, a lot of times we self-medicate because we don't wanna deal with something and we don't wanna hear something. We don't wanna have to process something. We want to numb ourselves or avoid something. And that goes back to right here, the thoughts that are in our own head. And so if we can at this moment, you know, taking out a journal, a piece of paper and really start analyzing those thoughts that are in your head. And the best way to do it is right when you're self-sabotaging, if you can catch it, when you're in the process of self-sabotaging, that's the best time to catch these core beliefs that are kind of undercover. Because remember, the core beliefs are hidden by our daily situations, our daily stressors, our responsibility, you know, the day-to-day -day thoughts, the 
news, the media, Facebook, social media, all that stuff is clouding all that. And so it's kind of hidden, right? It's, it's hidden in the back there where you're not really sure what's going on. And so if we can start analyzing that, especially when we're about to self-sabotage. So if you're about to pick up a drink and that's not really the time to have a drink, or maybe you're about to you know, interact with some sort of other activity, or you're connecting with somebody that might not be very good for you in your life, somebody that's not really helpful and somebody that's not really healthy for you. Why is it that I'm choosing this? Why am I going down this pathway? And that can be very inspirational, but also very aware. And we just recently created a video that's at length on self-sabotage and understanding self-sabotage, what it is, why we do it. But this video specifically really thinking about how can you begin to change it? How can you begin to see it? Because I think you have to catch it in the moment. You, have, you know, it's something that you can't just look at it in um, a vacuum. You have to really look at it in real life. In my exploration for finding my own self-sabotage, I started creating the scientific experiment concept. Instead of getting really down on myself for doing something later on, what I tried to do is commit to memory that the next time that I did something that was self-sabotaging, I would actually look deeper into it like a scientific experiment. So I'm asking if you can do that now is the next time. So don't look at it as, oh my God, I screwed up again, or I can't believe I did this, or I can't believe I made that choice, is that when you feel like you're going down that road of self-sabotage, even if it's on drink two, or even if it is when you're hanging out with these certain friends, it might be the hour, the third hour that you're finally catching it, is why, why did I put myself in this position? Why did I make this choice? What's here that's making me want to choose something that's ultimately hurting me and getting in the way of our success, getting in the way of your success. And that's what's so important. And when I started doing that in my own life, things started getting a lot more clearer because I wasn't just doing this on autopilot anymore. I was starting to realize, oh, there was fear of success or there was fear of failure or there was fear of not being perfect or not living up to the expectations I had of myself, multiple layers or feeling that that wasn't gonna happen for me. So what would happen if that actually happens, what does that mean about my belief system, right? So that's what's so hard for us to believe that if we're believing something that's supposed to happen a certain way and it doesn't, or something else changes that, it's really hard to understand that because of the way our brain works. So we can sit there and get in the way of that, creating it so that we constantly sabotage ourselves to making the core belief be true because otherwise we have to change the core belief. So if we believe that we're never gonna be successful, but tomorrow we have this huge interview for this position we've always wanted, that's exactly what we wanted, it can be a very hard position. That night before the interview can be really, really hard not to self-sabotage because we believe that we're never gonna get there anyway. So what would happen if we actually got that? And so it's almost like changing the entire rule book is changing our core beliefs. So if you can begin to use this as a scientific experiment, and if you have that big interview and you're catching yourself wanting to go out with your friends and party all night and doing those types of things, you might have to like literally be on watch for yourself that night, you know, keeping yourself at home, but at the same time watching, why am I going for another glass of wine in the refrigerator? Why am I choosing to get on the phone at 1230 at night when I need to be up at 6 a.m.? Start looking at those, start looking at the reasons and the actions to start understanding what's really down here in the core beliefs that we need to excavate to make sure that we don't have to continue to self-sabotage. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you like this concept and like our video if you like the video as well. And in the comments section, let me know, have you been able to do the scientific experiment in your own life and catch your own self-sabotage and begin to understand the core beliefs? Because once we get down to that level and we understand that this exists, that's when we can begin to change it. Don't forget, to live your true life.